and so happy to be able to celebrate this day and to really to be able to celebrate it with such good men. We are, you know, good, good men are hard to find. You know, when we look at our nation and we look at our land, if we had more good men, it wouldn't be in the condition that it's in today. We need more good men. We hear about the crime that is across our land. We, heard, we hear about the children getting abused all across our land. Why? Because we're looking for good men. We hear about all the crimes and the violence going on the, in the land. House being breaking. Murders all over. Why is that? Because there's a lack of good men in our nation. You look at the lives of the three men we honor today. We don't hear nothing like that about them because they are good men. Right. See, we are looking for good men. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 22 and 30, it says this. Sorry, Ezekiel. Ezekiel 22 and 30 says this. And the Lord is speaking to the prophet. And I saw, and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it but I find but I found none. See, a lot of times we take men for granted. We just kick them to the curb. And we don't, you know, say, oh that's just man, that's just Father's Day. But you gotta understand. You gotta understand how important a man is. See, God is a God of order. And God has put a man in a unique position in the order of things. And when man, when a, when a man, when a good man is not in place, everything else goes to, to go to waste. I, I don't understand it, but that's how the spirit is working. In this chapter of Ezekiel, of Ezekiel chapter 22, the prophet is complaining about the sin and the result of sin in the land. Every, every uh, office of authority in the land was corrupt. Everything was going to waste. And, 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 and everything be sent, God was ready to put them in the furnace and to burn them up. But the Bible says he looked for a man. He looked for a man. See, he sought. He's looking for a man who was able and willing to stand in the gap. He's looking for a man who was able to stand up to the controversies and the things that were about to happen. See, this Bahama land that we are living in today need good men. Amen. We need good men who will stand in the gap for that child, who will stand in the gap for that family, who will stand in the gap protecting society from the ills that's about to come upon it. Because this world, all they are seeking after is breaking down value systems. See, I, I heard, I, this world is getting so petty, so petty. I heard the lady yesterday, well, my wife and I, I think was watching the YouTube or watching uh, the television, one of those. And the lady was saying, so, oh, she don't believe in a man opening the door for her. So, oh, chivalry, chivalry is, is just something to make the woman feel like she's inferior. Like the world! See, you got, you got a good man. See, I'm the fellas, I'm, you won't get in the car yet. A woman looking for a good man. What was it? Honey, no, don't do that. Let me just open the door for you. Uh, let me push the chair in for you. Let me hold your hand. Said, Come on, we look at, the Bible said we need some good men. So, oh, the lady said, oh, oh, they, 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 they do it as if a woman needs protection. See, she don't need to be protected from nobody. Look here, God put the man there for a reason. And when the man is not doing what he's supposed to do, the world will go to waste. You see that already? Yes. In the Bible, because Adam kept quiet while the serpent was talking to Eve, the whole world had a been yeah, yeah, That's why the man got to talk. The man got to be, be what God has called him to be. That's why he gave us the manual for like the Bible, to study the Bible so that he'll know what he, what he has. See, the man, the Bible says, God said, honor thy father. They call father Christ. Yeah. And thy mother, right? He goes, see, let it know she's equal. The Bible says, husband, love your wife. I gotta I gotta outline, but if we don't get the outline, that's okay. Alright? I'll tell you, but then I'll give you the blank. Just give him an email. 
and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Say, John, see, a good man is a man who is a Christian, who has learned to lean on God. The Bible said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. The half of the heart? Three quarters of the heart? No. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto, unto thy own understanding. See now, when you try to lean on your own understanding, you, 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 you'll fail right away. Because why? Man is limited. Man do know everything. You are here today, but you, you, you don't know what's going on in your house right now. You are here today, and you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Man is limited, so we cannot lean on our own understanding. Plus, everything that you know, probably somebody taught you that. That's right. Now, if they wasn't right, you still learn the wrong way. <laughs> right? Right? See, 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 see the, the Bible said, lean on, you don't know it. Only see, God knows. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. He will direct it. And then, a, man, a good man is one who leans on the Lord for salvation. For salvation, my friends. God alone can save. God alone can save. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith. And not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. A good man understands that salvation comes from no one else but God and God alone. A good man understands that, my friend. And he will lean on God. See, we as men, you know, we macho. We don't like to lean on people. We don't like to, you know. But see, God say, God want to make you as a child. He said, lean on me. Understand and learn from me and you will see the greatness and the goodness of the Lord. My, my friends, God is able to do it in your heart. He is able to do it in your life, my friends. See, because a good man will lean, will lean on God. Not only for that, he will lean on God for strength, for strength. See, we are weak. Our strength, may be, we may be strong today, but my friends, we may be weak tomorrow, my friends. Many of us were young. One time ago. I remember the time I got to run the basketball court, run about 10 times, and I'm not tired yet. Right? Now, today, I run up what, what, once or twice. That's it. That's it. Remember the youth, when we were young, there's so many things that we could do. We could go all day long without eating, because we played. We all having fun. We do all these things. But now, for some reason, as the clock turned, so are the days of our lives. And as they turn slowly, the world continues to turn and the world changes. And we change with the world. Until we were once young and we were once restless. But my friends, only <laughs> But my friends, we see that with time, we get one gray here, one gray there. Then we don't see no black at all. Because all the great, and then we started cut our hair bald. And then, and then we started to slow down. With every birthday, we started to see things that we can't do anymore. Then my friends, but we have to rely on God for our strength. He is able to make us strong in areas that we are weak in. The Bible says in Isaiah 40, even the youths will faint and be weary. And the young man will utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run, they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not feed. My friends, a good man understands that his strength, his sustenance, what's keeping him comes from the Lord. And he turns to God, my friends, each and every day. A good man understands that all his supply comes from the Lord. God is the one who supplies. He is the one who meets our need. Everything that we have. You know, so, oh my brother, pastor. I, 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 I work for that. I supply that. I know, my friend, God is the one who will give you health. God is the one who will give you strength. God is the one who will give you knowledge and wisdom and understanding and education and the ability to do all the things that you do. God is the one who gifted you in such a way so that you can do things that no one else can do. God did. God did. God is the one who gives you oxygen. 
Because without on oxygen, you'll stay in the bed. You'll never get up. But God breathed into your nostril and made you a living soul. God did it, not you. And so you got to understand and remember that all your supply, everything that you have comes from God. Everything, everything. The Bible says this in Philippians 4 and 9. It says, but my God will supply what? All, all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We all want to be, you know, see, my friends, you got to understand that. We all want to have all these things. But remember that God will supply all you need. See, a good man understands that God is a supplier. God is the provider. God is the one who meets every need, my friends. He will not turn to unlawful means to gather into his bonds. No, he will trust in the Lord and lean not on his own understanding. A good man relies on God for soundness and wisdom. A good man relies on God for wisdom. Many times, Matters and issues are facing in the family, and the man, they bring it to the man. The man says, oh my goodness, I don't know what to do. The father says, I don't know what to do. He don't say it loud, but in his mind, he said, man, I don't know what to do. Lord, I need you. Yeah. I need you to give me wisdom in the situation. I need you to give me the right words to say, the right actions to take. Lord, guide me. He relies on God for wisdom. The Bible says in James 1 and 5, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men. See? All men. He didn't just left with it. All men liberally and unbraidedly and not. And it, will, and it shall be given him. God is very able and he is willing to give you all the wisdom that you need. There's no reason why we as men should be unwise. We as men are supposed to have all the wisdom that we need. But last of you ask God for wisdom. When the last of you ask God for understanding, when the last of you ask God to lead you and guide you in situation, or you just take it upon yourself and say, I can do it. I know what to do, I can do it. And what happened? Everything getting messed up because you didn't rely on God. And then number two, a good man is a man who has learned to lead. See, a lot of times, we as men, we don't, figure, we don't know how to lead. We don't know how to lead. A man is a natural born leader. And you have to learn to lead. You have to learn to lead. The Bible says, you know, it's a, they have to see, a lot of times, a lot of things in life will try to lead us. Right? And, and, and one of the things that leads men and men get in trouble with is the flesh. The flesh. They have, see, a man supposed to be leading the flesh. Not the flesh leading the man. Say, Pastor, you talking, you talking about the flesh don't lead the man. Let me read this text and then we'll talk about it in a minute. Right? The Bible says in Galatians 5, 16 and 17, it says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit. Live. Walk in the Spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusted against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And, there are, and these are contrary, the one to the, to the other. So that you cannot do the things that you should, my friends. See, my friends, the flesh will lead you. It will pull you in one direction because the flesh is hungry. And it has its desires. It would not. And if you're not careful, the flesh will lead you down a path that you should not go. My friends, are you being led by the flesh today? Is the flesh leading you in a way that you should not go? It leads you in lust. What you're lusting after? What you're looking at? What you're doing that you're feeding the flesh? The flesh will leave you, lead you right to death. You're eating all that food that you shouldn't eat. You're trying to feed the flesh and satisfy the flesh. You, you, you're talking to people you shouldn't talk to. You get involved in situations you ought not to be in. See, God is saying that you shall not allow the flesh to lead you. And when the flesh leads you, see what happened to Esau. He allowed the flesh to lead him, and he, lo and he lost his birthright. Why? Because he let the flesh overpower him. What happened to David? He allowed the flesh to lead him. And he lost the opportunity to build the temple of the Lord. When the flesh leads you, and causes you to lose out on the blessings that God has for you. 
The Bible says in Galatians 2 and 20, say, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Christ is now living in you. So live like you are a Christian and not a sinner. If Christ living in your heart and your life, why are you living like any other uh, uh, um, 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 no good Christian? Is Christ in you? Or are you just a hypocrite? Is Christ in you? Or are you going to hear those words, depart from me, I never knew you. Is Christ in you? The Bible said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ living in me. And the life which I now live, in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. See, my friends, men, we are to lead our flesh. And our flesh will not lead us. We are to be the leaders in our lives, my friend. God has called us to be leaders, not to be followers. And then, we are to lead our families. A man is called to lead his family. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, Ephesians 5 and 23, for the husband is the head of the wife. I didn't say that. The Bible said that. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. See, my friends, headship isn't being the big boss. But it, it is a loving leadership. God is not re no respecters of persons. Women are equal, but God put in the function, see, a woman cannot be a man. No matter what they say today, about they transforming and they have all these things, they, they, they do it to people, I don't care what they do to them. They are a man. And I don't care what they do to her, she's a woman. They can do as much um, uh, um, um, things in the laboratory as they want. God decides. And see, in God's wisdom, he has given each family a head for any, anything with two heads. Any, 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 anything with two heads is a monster. That's not, you got one leader. Not three and four and five. You see? And so God is saying to us, he is saying to you and I, my friends, that you are a leader. He wants you to be the man. Many women today are hungry. They are crying out for the man to lead. They don't want to be doing the things they're doing. They say, I want my husband, I want him to lead. A lot of us just want to decide. Just, no! You're putting more on her than she's supposed to have on her. And then they see, because God said, a husband is to love the wife. And if you're going to, you know, just throw your leadership on her like that, that's not loving her. That's putting more stress on her. You know, you wonder why she got high blood pressure. Because she had to do things that she, you know, you wonder why she always stressed up. She wonder why she always tired. When you want to have fun, she say, I'm tired. <laughs> huh? This thing always says, all you gotta do is do your job, and you'll be happy. Right. God wants you to be happy. That's why he said, lead. <laughs> Help them, Lord. Help them. Help them. Right? See, a man is a leader. He's supposed to lead his family. And so a good man will do his job. And when he do his job, God will bless him. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. A good man is a man who has learned to love. Learn to love. You got to love, man. You got to love. Yes. You get more love. You need more love. Right? <laughs> you got to love. You got to learn to love the Father. See, because in the world that we live in, they have taken love and they make it like, like nothing. Like they put it right down here and they say, I love candy. I love, you know, everything they say. I love tennis. I love, I love. And see, they, what they have done to you and I, through commercials and whatnot, they have taken the L uh, for loss and they put love there and they have caused you to keep your attention on this. Like, and you start to say, I love, I love Aquafina water. I love Nike tennis. I love see, all these things you love. How you get love? They taking you all of it. They making you think you love them. They, that's your love. They will be selling a new car. That's what they do to you, man. And we watching. We want all we want to do is watch football. Yeah. But they will take into doing the commercial a nice, beautiful car 
and then they will put a woman in a skimpy uh, uh, outfit. I say, if, if you borrow that car, that woman with a skimpy outfit will come with it. Huh? <laughs> See, they're trying to twist your mind. He said, all you all say, boy, I love that car. And you don't know how you get in your head about this car. He said, boy, I love that car. I just love that car. Why? Because they package it in such a way that they get your attention and they plan deep down in your subconscious this and so you start to believe what they say. You know? And, and, and that's what happens. And you love the wrong thing. You know, you know, a lot of times, a lot of us here say, oh, I just love Wendy's. I can't live without Wendy's. Oh, say, no, Brother Joe, I don't, I don't go to that. I just love KFC. I gotta go to KFC or, you know, or coffee. I don't even want to talk about coffee. You know, they can smell it, they can smell it, they can smell a different brew just by just the nose. You know, they know that, oh, well, that's Maxwell House. No, I don't drink that. I, I don't drink that. That's no, that's low grade now. I just love this. You know? See? Starbucks. Starbucks, eh? All they want is your money. And God is saying, He's saying, you're going to love the Father. You're going to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. God is saying, God says in 1 Corinthians 13, it says this, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and, though, and have not charity, which is, you know, charity means love, I am become a sounding brass and a tingling symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I have my and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, Offered me nothing. The Bible is saying you got to have the love of God in your heart. You got to be genuine. You got to be real. You got to be sincere. So when you say you love somebody, it's real. When you say you care about somebody, it's genuine. When you say you love something, oh, you see, God got to be in your heart. See, because God wants us to have that same love. And same concern for people that he has. Many of us say we love God, but we don't like people. Bye, bye, bye. I don't even drop the love. We don't like people. We don't want nobody around us. We say we love God. We don't care about people. And God said, You cannot be my disciple. You cannot be my child. You ain't got no love in you. You gotta love people, man. Jesus came to earth for the people. He came to earth for you. Then we gotta love our families. You gotta love your family. You care about your family. See, if you have love for your family, there are certain things you just wouldn't do. So you gotta say, man, like, yeah, I cannot do that. You know, you want, I love my family more than that. You know, when Joseph was tempted to sin, and he was the, the woman, you know, she was bothering him all day. Joseph said, look here, man, you want me to sin against my God? He loved God that much. And, he, and so Joseph was saying to her, it's not just about me. It's more than me. I am a representative of Almighty God. And so I got to care about my family. So, for example, I remember when, when, when me, I, you know, many of you go abroad. And when you go abroad, you know, my mother and my father, when growing up, they ain't greening us from, from small certain things. So even though I was like in, in Connecticut, going to school, and, and, and I, was, I got to do everything, anything I wanted to do. Anything I wanted to do in Connecticut, because my mommy was in there, my daddy was in there, I have to worry about nobody. But everything, all I can hear in my mind, is my, 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 that's what dirt, if I do this, I would disappoint my mother and father. I know my mother, my, my mother and father wouldn't like this. My mother, I said, all your mother, see, see, God is saying to you and I, we have to love our families and understand and watch over them, protect them. You're a good man. You gotta love your family. You're not gonna stop to the bar room on the way from getting your, you know, people get paid on Friday. 
and they stuck to the bar room by 12, um, um, 4 o'clock and, and they spent all the money. And when they get home, the wife said, honey, we need the money to go buy some groceries. We need some money to pay for the, 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 something for the child for school. And I ain't got no money. No. I don't, how, you, how come you don't get the money? I thought you got paid today. I ain't got no money. I, what you mean you don't? I ain't got all the answers I don't get no money. See, my friends, you don't love your family when you're doing things like that. No. And then you are a father. And you say you have children. And you don't take care of the children. They are children. Children are a gift from God. Amen. They are a gift from God. And if God bless you with them and gave them to you, God will bless you with the resources and everything to take care of those children. Now, how you manage that resource, how you, you see, because you are the one. God will put the money in your pocket, put the money in your bank account, put the money in your heart, hand. He said, manage this now. You got to pay the school fee. You got to pay the, 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 the light bill. You got to pay all these things. And then you say, man, I can go and have fun. I can do what I want. Man, look here, I can have two girlfriends. I can have three girlfriends, and I can do all these things. And then you don't take care of your family. And you expect God to bless you. And then you want to say you're a good father. Or you want to brag to the boys that you got plenty of children. My friend, you're not a good father. You give, you give the father the bad name. And these children are suffering. And we're wondering why the society is being destroyed. It's because the fathers are not doing what they're supposed to do. So it's important that we understand this. Because the man, the father has a spiritual role. As the head of the family, you are the priest of the family. You are the one who got a spiritual role. And the Bible tells us this. And so you ought to love your family. Take care of your family. Keep them safe. I remember, I mean, I've seen uh, many cases where persons have had children outside of wedlock, and when they got married, the, 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 the spouses accepted those children, and they become part of the family. And I've seen the blessings on those children's lives. Yes. It's a God is saying, you got to take care of your own. Right. Take care of your children. There's so many children in this Bahama land who have never seen their father, never seen their mother, suffering today, going through things that they shouldn't go through at that age because you walk away from what God has blessed you with. My friend, a good man loves his family. A good man cares for his family. And then a good man loves the fellowship of the church. Love the fellowship of the church. I learned what I learned because my daddy went to church. I learned, I walked, I walked behind him when the car wasn't working, we walked to church. I walked behind him, I was trying to imitate walking like him, but I was walking behind him. I learned, and I watched him, I sit there, because he loved the church. If mommy wasn't ready, he gone. The church. Because he know God is a good, he's the leader. He said, we go to church. And you know, as a boy, you know, I said, well, I said this day, man, look here. Now I ain't going to church today. I don't care what nobody says. Uh, I thought I was in my own house then. <laughs> and I said, I ain't going to church. I don't care what he say. I go, I you know, we have big, we had a big property in Abaco. We had like five acres and a lot of trees. So what I did, I jumped out the I went out the house and I go on all the way in the back. So I know when daddy ready to go to church, he gone. So he, you know, and so he going to church. Mommy going to church. All the children going to church. So I was having fun. I was having a blast. I was, you know, I was enjoying myself. But daddy had to come home. Yeah. And daddy didn't forget. I didn't preach hard. The Holy Spirit still was working in him. And he got home. And he was left handed. And he never spread the rod. And then even though I was having fun, he said, John. You know, the only thing they want you better go, you better go fast when they say it once. I said, what happened to you? Why didn't you come to church? And before I could answer, pop! <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like, you can move. Why didn't you come? Of course, after that, I love to go to church. I never, <laughs> I never miss church again. But you gotta love the fellowship of the brothers and sisters. We love them. 
You know, many of the experiences, we learn the scriptures and we learn about God through going to church, Sunday school, Bible study, all these things. We learn when we go to church. We fellowship with other children. We fellowship with each other. We learn. We get to know people. We know how to deal and, and work with people through going to church. And God, fill your cup until it overflow. It's got to come when you go to church. But you cannot say you love the Lord and you don't love to go to church. You cannot say you love the Lord and you just not to Lord anymore. Come to church any kind of time. See, God said, come. You know, you have to enter God's gates with thanksgiving. You have to enter his court with praise. You have to come rejoicing because he is the one who keeps you safe. He is the one who blessing you. He is the one who got anointing on you. He is the one who put a cup on you. He is the one who put a gas. When look, you didn't have a dollar, God give you twenty dollars. You fill your tank, and now you're to the church. Put the cows. Look at the cows there. That looks nice. Eh? God provided that. Look all them cows around you. God provided them. And so when the Sunday come, you gotta say, man, look here. I don't care about you. I can leave you. I go to church. I go to worship my God. I am going to serve my king. I'm going to glorify him today because he has been good to me. A good man leads his family to church. The Bible says, Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That's how valuable you are. That's how valuable you are. You don't understand how valuable you are. I was thinking about the, about the, about the saying, you know, when people want to know how much people how much money people got, they, just, they, they often say, oh, he worth uh, $15,000 or $15 million, or he worth $100 million, or he, or he worth a couple billion. I said, look, yeah, that's a bad statement because you value, your value is much more than that number. <laughs> you know, you ought to say his assets or his investment is $15 million because your value, if only you was on earth, it had to be saved. Jesus Christ would have left glory and come to earth on a mission to save you. That you, you don't understand how valuable you are. And my friends, with all that work, with all that value in, in you, you just throw it away and give it away to see. You don't care, my friends. I often see young people, they look so handsome and beautiful when they're young. An enemy just come along and just destroy that. Take it away. All they want to do is snatch that youth, snatch that potential, snatch that treasure out of you and destroy your life. God is saying to you and I, lean on me. Love me. Let me lead you. And you will see great things happen in your heart, happen in your life, because I can do it. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 9, but as touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you, for you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Are you loving one another today? The Bible says this to you, and it encourages you today. God is looking for you today. Will you lean on him today? I don't know what you're leaning on. You may be leaning on your boss, leaning on uh, 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 your career, leaning on your education, leaning, leaning on your bank account. You may be leaning on something today where you feel that that would secure you and keep you. My friends, everything that you're leaning on, if it's not God, will fail. Lean on him today. Start leading him, leading like him today. Being a leader like God today. Start loving like him today. You can do it if you will just trust in him today. Let's bow this morning. Our Father in God, as you search the hearts of your people today, as you search the heart of every individual in here today, I pray, O oh God, in Jesus' name, that if there be anyone here today that don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, I pray, O oh God, that they will trust in you, that they will turn their hearts and their life to you today before the day too late. I pray, oh God, that you would, through the power of your spirit, give them no rest, give them no peace, give them no comfort until they come to you. Understand that in you alone is hope 
and you alone is peace. And you alone is the deliverance that they need. Oh God, I pray today for every father in here today. I pray, oh God, that they would, oh God, turn their hearts and their lives to you. I pray that you would cover them and anoint them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Cause them, oh God, to love you more. Cause them, oh God, to allow you to lead them. Oh God, cause them today, the Lord, to allow you to do your work in their hearts and their lives so that they would be the mind of God that you would have for them to be. Use them, I pray, oh God, that they would be a blessing to many other young men, that they, oh God, will be granted with wisdom in such a degree that they, oh God, will help in the lives of so many others, dear Lord. Oh God, I pray today in Jesus' name that you would bless the men of this church. Oh God, put a hedge around them to protect them from the attacks of the enemy. Oh God, I pray that you would pour into them more and more each and every day. Fill them with your spirit and new and afresh, oh God. Have your way in their hearts and their lives, oh God. Cause them to be men of wisdom, men of authority, good men. Men who will be the example that you have for them to be. Oh God, I praise your name and I worship you, dear Lord. I pray that you would just work in the hearts and the lives of every individual here today. And I pray that the joy of you, oh God, will be in them and they, oh God, will experience every blessing, every deliverance that you would have for them to have today, dear Lord. Have your way. And also, oh God, I pray for the children. The children who are, God, oh God, is saying, Lord, bless my daddy. Watch over my daddy. Strengthen him. Oh God, I pray for the children that they will continually be praying to you, talking to you. Spend a time with you. Oh God, I pray that they would give their heart to you before it's a day too late, dear Lord. Have your way in their hearts and their lives. Oh God, we praise your name. We thank you, oh God, for your blessings. We thank you for all you have done today. And we pray that as we go home today, as we enjoy the fellowship and the meals around the table with our family, dear Lord, let us never forget to give you thanks, to give you honor, to give you praise. Because truly, oh God, you are good. We worship you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Presence of the Lord, I've been free. 